near-death experiences. Are they a fallacy or is it a true thing? No, they're real. They're real events. Oh, good. Every time you have a near-death experience, and hopefully you don't have too many of them, <laughs> right? <laughs> but many of them are very pleasant, right? Mm. And most of them are. The reason why is what happens when you're in a near-death state, your spirit and material, your, your soul and your spirit body leaves your material body. There's a silver cord connection that's maintained between your bodies. And until that material body actually physically dies, that silver cord connection remains in place. But you now have a major consciousness coming through your spirit body senses. Your spirit body has eyes, ears, has all of those senses that the material body has and more. And it, it begins to absorb what's really going on through its spirit senses rather than the physical senses. So what you're actually doing is experiencing uh, some actual things going on in your so-called sleep state, if we could call it that, and you are seeing them because you're awake now. You're now, if the body dies, then the silver cord will snap and you'll never be able to enter that body again. Right? But if the body remains alive and the silver, silver cord remains in place, then you will eventually come back into the body and remember those experiences. Yeah. And so that's why there are, like, there are literally millions of people having out of body experiences and near-death experiences. Yeah. It brings me to organ transplant. Yep. Um, what happens there if you have your organs transplanted? How long does your silver cord stay intact? Um, all this... Well, yeah, is it this is it's the right thing, or is it? Yeah, this is where it's really important for a lot of the medical profession to come to come to know the truth about the body, right, and the soul, because you can actually tell once you're sensitive, you can tell when the cord is snapped, and as soon as that cord is snapped, that body can be used for anything, pretty much, can't it? Mm -hmm. like, it's no longer needed for the person who's. Some, they've only got so long to actually... I realise that. Them, so that's where the... That, and this is where the ethical problems relate, is yeah. that quite often a, a body is in a state which you could call, call suspended animation type state, but the silver cord is yet to snap. Mm -hmm. And all of you have heard of the resurrection of Lazarus in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Well, what happened there was he's, he, he was in a suspended animation type state, but his silver cord, the silver cord had not snapped between his body and, and his spirit body. And that's why I managed to so-called resurrect him. You can't resurrect anybody if their silver cord is snapped. Right? So, so if the silver cord snaps, then anything in that body is usable. Right? But, but if, if, if I'm trying to make the silver cord snap as a doctor to get some harvest of something else, then there's actually some emotional penalties on my soul where I'm breaking some laws of God doing that. What about the actual soul if the silver cord is still attached and the, you know, they are um, harvested? Does that affect the, the soul in any fear of physics? Well, if the silver cord remains intact, it's because the soul at some level wants that to remain intact mm. if the body itself is in this sort of state of suspended animation. So everything is based upon the free will of the soul. So if somebody goes along and then kills the body, then what they're actually doing is breaking a law of free will for that particular person. Now, it doesn't impact the person too much, perhaps, in some instances, but in some instances, if they have a strong desire to return to Earth, it could impact them upon them greatly. And so there are many people who pass into the spirit world who have this strong feeling that they, that they should have been alive still, and they have this strong feeling too that uh, the person they have some strong anger towards doctors and stuff like that who have actually caused their premature death, or the other way around sometimes too, a strong anger towards ones who have who have tried to halt their death when they really wanted to go. And so the key is you know, understanding the free will of the person. And this is where mediums and everyone can do a lot of lot more clever work really in a lot of ways. Rather than just channeling information to a person sitting in front of them, what they could even do is sit in a hospital and things like that and ask the person who's in this state, what do they want? Do they want to leave their body or do they want to keep it here? What do they want? You know, and talk to them, talk them through that process and help them come to realise whether they want to come back or they want to go. I had, uh, I think I mentioned so, uh, Friday night, didn't I, about John who died. My, my best friend uh, is the Apostle John, and he, he was, he's one of the 14 who have returned. And he died 18 months ago. He was murdered. 
And uh, there were, it was a period of four days between him being stabbed and when he actually passed. And during those four days I was talking with him about all sorts of issues which he was finding difficult to actually deal with. What happened was that on the first day of his stabbing and the day after, he was in really quite a good condition and everybody thought that he would be fine. On the second day, there was an event that happened in his home that he saw occurring in his sleep state that really badly affected him emotionally. What happened was, in it, while he was in the unconscious state, he was out of body, he was visiting his own home. And his parents and his brothers were ransacking his home as if he'd already died. And, and he had such a big response to that emotionally. And ironically, it was the same, those same emotions that caused his stabbing, his avoidance of those emotions. But he has such a big response to that emotionally that he no longer wanted to live on earth. Before then he was wanting to, and at that point he just didn't want to anymore. He just felt there was nobody on earth who loved him, which was the emotion that he was avoiding before then. And, uh, and because of that, his bowel in his body died, died within one day. And, uh, and because of that, he, he passed yeah, through a few days later. So, so a lot of these things happen emotionally, you know, even, even the person passing. They, a lot of people in the sleep state or in, the, in an unconscious state see the real thoughts of those around them and are so distressed by those real thoughts and feelings that they want to just go. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of things affecting this process of passing. Oh, Jay, 